So as we get closer to the rise of Skywalker, there's going to be tons of shill articles for Star Wars, kind of similar to Captain Marvel, if you remember as we were getting close to that movie. Everybody was talking about Captain Marvel, and that's because, well, there was tons of stuff out to talk about. Plus, you've got the cringe people, you've got the shills, uh, you've got bad decisions that are made. It just becomes really interesting stuff to talk about. And sure enough, every day, something drops that's worth kind of either talking about or making fun of, one of the two. Uh, We're going to do a little bit of both here as there's a bunch of things that came out overnight, magically, every day. The shills just go to work just sucking so good to that Disney teat. So we're going to talk about some Disney stuff here, Uh, some closures. Disney Legoland shut down, no official reason why. And we got those baby Yodas coming. And then, of course, Rey Skywalker, as she's going to get called, I promise you, uh, they had no idea what they were doing with her, and they can't shut up about it. Now, one thing I want to give them credit for is Baby Yoda, because they've actually really got people excited about Star Wars with him and the, and merch, Star Wars merch. People actually want this merch, unlike when you go to Target and you see Rise the Rise of Skywalker toys, literally on clearance, by the way. Like, there's no merchandise for that movie, which I find absolutely funny because every Star Wars movie has always flooded shelves with merchandise, and this time there's barely anything. They have these figures, and they look like animated cartoons, and it's like, what is this? You know, this doesn't look anything like the kid. This looks like it's out of Star Wars Rebels or something. This is not what people want. Nonetheless, uh, they are on clearance in some places, which I find absolutely hilarious because it really shows you just how far Star Wars has fallen. However, Baby Yoda is in everyone's heart. And that has a lot to do with the fact that it's a baby. And humans, there's a lot of science to back this up, want to naturally protect babies. And one of the reasons that we do that is is because they look so cute. Uh, The eye size, the size of the head is a big reason for that. And I think it's definitely one of the reasons that they designed Baby Yoda like this so that people would care about it and talk about it. And it's working. It was smart. Luckily, The Mandalorian is also a good show, which helps. But uh, they're actually going to release this merchandise. I fully expect this merchandise to be a big hit and hard to find. For the first time in a long time, you're going to have a hard time finding Star Wars merchandise. Because if you remember, the toys, the action figures used to be hard to find. Uh, That's not the case anymore. I expect Baby Yoda to actually be worth some money. Uh, It's almost going to be like, you know, how Star Wars used to be. Uh, Of course, Rise of the Skywalker is going to put another dent in the series. But uh, this was a smart move doing the Baby Yoda stuff. But for every good move, there's something like this that comes out. So say goodbye to Star Wars at Legoland, by the way. Never been to Legoland, never seen this, but nonetheless, it's closing. We don't get a reason why. i uh, read a couple different articles. They won't say if it's because a license is expiring or if it's due to low interest. Uh, I would say probably a combination of both, but here's the thing that I think out of this is that probably interest was so down, they didn't bother to renew the license for it, so... There's a lot of speculation that you can do there, but I would say probably no one cares about it because, well, I mean, until recently, until at least as far as I've seen, until there was a a peak, Force Awakens, Star Wars was booming again. Everybody was excited for Force Awakens and for a lot of reasons. We were getting the old characters back. We were finally getting a sequel to Return of the Jedi. There was hype. People were hyped. Star Wars hype was high. And then that movie came out, and it subsided really quick, uh, mostly because that film was kind of regrettable. And then The Last Jedi came, screwed up the fandom big time. Huge, huge punch in the gut. And ever since then, you know, and it got kind of the cherry on top was Solo. Ever since then, Star Wars has just been going downhill. I mean, it's, it's undeniably the truth to me that Ryan Johnson destroyed Star Wars in so many different ways. And, I mean, you see it at the theme parks with Disney. I hear they're barren. I hear nobody's there. And there's probably no one at this. So they probably didn't want to renew any agreements. We'll just retire it. Use the space for something else, which is what a lot of these places do. And then they'll put something else there that people actually want to see. And, uh, you know, it's unfortunate to see the brand go through this. Now, We're going through another hype period right now. At least I feel it. 
because of Mandalorian and Jedi Fallen Order, which, man, I'm so in love with that Jedi Fallen Order game. I'm telling you. Like, I just unlocked Force Push last night, <laughs> and uh, it was so fun to go around and just shoot stormtroopers off cliffs and stuff. I'm really liking that game. So I'm feeling a lot of hype right now. Of course, when Jedi, when uh, The Rise of Skywalker comes out, I'm sure it would all go right down the toilet, kind of like bad Chinese food. But we'll see. We'll see. Because when I see articles like this, it really just kind of irritates me. So this is The Emperor Didn't Return in Colin Trevorrow's original The Rise of Skywalker script. If you don't know what's going on there, this guy was the original director for The Rise of Skywalker. He was the one that was going to make the movie. But then after Last Jedi came out, <laughs> they had they had to make a lot of changes. So they brought J.J. Abrams back. Now, here's the thing. Now, they're going to, of course, tell you, yeah, yeah, we were always, we had we had a plan from the beginning. We knew exactly what we were doing. We were going to nail it. Well, that's not the case. A lot of people have speculated since all of this went down, that Disney has no idea what they were doing and were just making up crap as they were going along. And this really does confirm that they had no idea what they were doing and they were just throwing shit at a wall. So we look at this and we find out because of Colin's interview that the Emperor wasn't in his script. He didn't have any plans to bring him back. So they brought JJ back because they had to figure out what to do. I think it's a mistake to bring him back. They should put, you know, somebody a little bit more Star Wars in there, like John Favreau or Dave Filoni. But for some reason, they don't want to give the obvious hires any work. It's it's weird to me why those guys aren't making Star Wars movies. It, it makes no sense to me. But you know, whatever. Regardless, it's confirmed through this that the Emperor was never involved in Chapter Nine, and. They brought him back. Why'd they bring him back? To get hype. Ooh, the Emperor is coming back. So they threw this together last minute, and that's why it's going through so many reshoots and all the stuff that's going on. It's it's a, it's a disaster, and they have no idea what they're doing. But I really like this because it proves what everyone was saying for so long, that they had no idea what the hell they were doing, and they just shoehorned him in there to get some kind of hype and nostalgia going because they killed all of the good characters. And they're going to they're gonna take him out in this one. Ray's going to be the bestest ever. She's going to stone cold slam. Uh, she's going to stone cold stun the Emperor into the ground in one scene. She's going to curb stomp him. And she's going to do what no man could do before and take out the Emperor. And just as J.J. Abrams has been saying in interviews, it's no accident that they made her this way. Of course they made her this way. Uh, she's a complete Mary Sue. We've seen some really funny arguments that she's not, but she definitely is. And they're going to give reasons why she's so powerful in this movie. Which <laughs> is going to, I guarantee it, be that she's the Emperor's granddaughter. That's been the big spoiler that's going around. A lot of posts on 4chan. I think even Doomcock was talking about it. How they're going to make Rey the granddaughter of the Emperor. I think that that's a way where we can validate it now. This is definitely why she's so strong. I mean, she's she's Darth Sidious's granddaughter. Of course, they never had any intention to do that from the beginning, but they put themselves in such a hole with fans who are upset because she's literally running around doing everything so easily while Luke Skywalker took three films to become a complete Jedi where she was doing everything in the first one almost, using Jedi mind tricks and being a master class lightsaber user. She can do anything. She can do it all. And there was no, there's the reason that they did that is bad writing. Okay. That's what it comes down to is bad writing. Uh, we're just going to have, you know, her do everything. The fans are going to love it. And that didn't happen. Like I've said time and time again, Finn should have been the Jedi. Finn would have had the best story. The force got through him finally after being blocked out and, and he got a conscious and, and learns that he's force sensitive and they could have put him down. Oh, you're just a lowly storm trooper. You dare to challenge me. That would have been an interesting story. But of course, they didn't want to do that because the Force is female, and we had to make Rey the bestest Jedi ever. And so now we're just going to say that she's the Emperor's granddaughter for some drama and some tension, and everyone will forgive it. No, no one's going to forgive it. No one's going to forget this, and it's going to be funny. And another thing is they just keep giving her powers. Rey's shocking new power revealed. So, of course, she's going to get a new power. Uh, they're pointing out in this that she's going to have the power to see past events, which would make sense. Uh, th and they point out 
in this, which actually kind of does make sense that in Jedi Fallen Order, if you've been playing that game, Cal has the ability to see past events by touching things like echoes, and that's the power she's going to have. I have no doubt that this is absolutely true. So once again, Ray gets, Ray gets to one-up the boys and be the bestest Jedi ever. Really surprising and shocking nobody because, well, Disney has no idea what the F they're doing when it comes to the movies. But they seem to be doing okay with TV. I really wish Dave Filoni or John Favreau would get her job, but what are we going to do? Maybe, just maybe, after the dumpster fire of The Rise of Skywalker, we can get some good TV shows and we get some Band-Aids on everything. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, who knows? Anyway, let me know your thoughts about this stuff. What do you think about Legoland? What do you think about, you know, Ray getting all these new powers? What do you think about the state of Star Wars in general? What do you think about Baby Yoda? I'd like to hear what you guys have to say on the matter. Also, make sure you're still subscribed. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. Leave a comment, like I said, and a like. Those are two big things. Those are engagement points. They really help videos move through the algorithm. So if you can take a time and like the video and leave a comment, I would really appreciate it. Also, make sure you got that notification bell smashed. And I was, as always, I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.